And this is where her story begins. It was a beautiful spring night. The stars were twinkling and a full moon was beaming over a small town in the northern part of Argentina. That town is called Alejandra. It was the 28th of March, 1932, and Nancy Marion Morgan was born right there in her house. Nancy was the youngest child of Maria Cecilia Tourne and Jose Arturo Evan Morgan, who were of French and Welsh descent. On my grandfather's side, the Morgans immigrated to Argentina from Wales in 1868. The McLeans had immigrated from Scotland to the U.S., then leaving California in the 1870s, they headed down the Pacific coast via a Chilean freighter. After landing in Chile, they crossed the Andes and settled into the northern part of Argentina to meet with other like-minded Protestants like the Morgans. My grandmother's ancestors, the Tourns, had immigrated from France to Argentina at about the same time. That family line can be traced back to Italy and France and were a part of the Valdains movement in the 12th century. The Tourns and Morgans had found a working relationship that benefited each other in developing their lands. Nancy had two brothers, Melvin and Leslie, and three sisters, Seferina, who was adopted, Miriam and Winnie. All the kids were named by their grandfather, who had insisted on Welsh names. 86 years ago, Agustin Pedro Justo was president of Argentina. The Olympics were held in Los Angeles. A gallon of gasoline cost 10 cents. The average American was earning $1,650 per year. A new house cost $6,500. And a loaf of bread was 7 cents. Life has changed a great deal since then. But life became better because of Nancy Marion Morgan Amaral and her never-ending abundant energies which were always focused not on what she could do for herself, but rather what she could do for others. When somebody loves you, it's no good unless he loves you. All the way Happy to be near you When you need someone to cheer you All the way In 1963, both Jose and Nancy were looking for a way to get to the U.S. They worked hard to get all the required visas, permits, sponsors, and cash that was needed to migrate to the U.S. Nancy was six months pregnant when it all came together, and they began their new journey in 1964. They traveled to the U.S. via Miami and ended in Athens, Georgia. Their second son, Eduardo, was born in Georgia that year. Jose was trained as a projectionist and even played a movie for President Eisenhower while the U.S. President visited Argentina. Jose was currently pressing pants in Georgia thanks to the work that was provided to him from the sponsors, but was looking for a way back into the movie business as a projectionist. Jose left Georgia and headed to Hollywood in search of a new job. Finally landing a great job in Hollywood, he sent for his family. Nancy brought the two boys across the U.S. via bus all by herself. She quickly established a home in Monterey Park and began the journey of raising two boys, taking care of her Spaniard and learning English. In 1968, Nancy and Jose were longing for a daughter. In typical Nancy fashion, she wanted to see how she could help someone else. So they decided to adopt. Alexandra was adopted soon after her birth in 1968. So now Nancy had three children and a household. She was quickly learning the English language and learning the ins and outs of American life. Pretty soon the boys were headed to high school and Alejandra was headed towards junior high. Nancy had now been immersed in motherhood and teaching her kids very valuable lessons in life. 
She sent her kids to etiquette classes, singing classes, and music classes. It was very normal to hear Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, Bach, Strauss, Vivaldi, Mozart, all blaring out of Jose's amazing stereo. Nancy always allowed her kids to listen to their music, but only if they listened also to her music. Than the tallest trees, that's how it's got to feel. Deeper than the deep blue sea is, that's how deep it goes. If it's real When somebody needs you It's no good unless he needs you All the way As life continued on, Nancy found a new role in life. Grandmama. Walking down the road Tell me how long you gonna stay here, Joe Some people say This town don't look good in snow You don't care, I know Venture a highway Nancy was helping to raise and love seven grandkids, and eventually that led to four great-grandchildren, the first of which named her Grandmamama. Being a mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and a friend to so many was a joyful and rewarding experience for her, always finding an opportunity to share those golden nuggets of wisdom and quotes that the Lord would share with her every morning from her devotionals. And God forbid she showed up with a list. You could be ready to hear some beautiful stories and some advice that was ready to be shared at almost every gathering. My mom was a volunteer in Argentina for individuals with HIV AIDS at a time when it was not popular to do so. She was that kind of brave. She was beyond friendly, talking to people and offering her place in line, just because. Another example of her caring heart, my mom once made a snowman cake with coconut flakes for a mentally challenged young man from church, and it seemed to mean the world to him. She enjoyed providing meals for the family, friends, and those in need. One of her joys was sponsoring a boy named Francisco from the Philippines from age four until he turned 18. My mom also loved to feed all kinds of animals from hummingbirds, squirrels, to cats and dogs. She had a genuine love for animals. She loved to sit at the table and observe all of the animals who would visit her in our backyard. Something she took seriously and spoke about often was being a member of the grand jury as a volunteer for the San Bernardino County. There are too many exceptional qualities to list about mom. Above all, she exhibited all of the Christ-like qualities you could hope for in a mother, grandmother, and friend. We love you, we'll miss you, and we'll see you again. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7.
This is only the beginning of an even greater story. I love you. Okay, honey. Bye-bye.